Hello again, geeks and gamers. This is going to be the last game I'm going to record today. I won't be uh, just bombarding you with too many videos over the next couple of days. I'll give you a little bit of a rest before I do some more. Um, but right now I want to talk about another game. This game has sort of shot to the top of my list of favorite games. I've been playing it a ton lately. Uh, it was a game that I purchased uh, with gift certificates uh, for as from that I got for Christmas and my birthday. And uh, I know it's a hot game right now. A lot of people have been playing it. Um, and some games tend to get a lot of gameplay purely for that reason. Uh, this one, in my opinion, definitely deserves it. And that game is Seven Wonders. Seven Wonders. It's a game by Antoine Bowser. Uh, produced by Repos Productions, the same company who made a, another video or another game from another video I just did recently, Cash and Guns. Um, but it's it's a really good game. Let's let's talk a little bit about it down here. All right, so this is sort of the setup for the game. Um, not really the setup, I should say. This this is kind of what comes with it. You've got token uh, little coin tokens. You got a three and a one. You've got these little red tokens, which rep represent military. You've got three decks of cards, and you've got a stack of these little cards here. Now these cards, let's talk about one of these first. These are your wonder. This is kind of what you're building off of to run the game. Um, in each age of the game, you have three ages, one for each deck of cards, you're going to get a hand of seven cards. Uh, in that hand... Uh, your ultimate goal is to do things to build things so you can build up victory points. Um, a lot of these stage er, ages will have victory points in them when you build the stage of your age, um, such as these. Now, we're, I'm going to go with this one for right now, move this one to the side, and we'll talk about how this works. Um, when you get your seven cards in your hand, you're going to have a couple of different cards you can look at. Um, you've got these blue cards, these here are purely victory points. As you can see, this is where three victory points are here at the top. You have these gold cards. Gold cards usually um, either give you gold to spend, you know, the coins like this, or makes things cheaper. For example, this card, this gold card, means that any of these four resources, brick, stone, lumber, or ore, I can buy from my neighbor in the direction that the arrow is pointing for one gold. That They normally would cost two gold. Um, then you have basic resources, like these, produces one ore, this one is one stone, etc. Uh, you also have what's called advanced resources, these are the gray cards. They're exactly the same as the basic resources, only uh, these are more pr produ produced goods, like in this case glass, whereas the uh, basic resources are just you know, basic goods. Um, then we have science cards. Each science card has a different symbol at the top. There are three different symbols. There is the cog. There are um, a little clay tablet. And there's also a compass, like that one. So you've got cog, compass, and tablet. These by themselves don't really do much during the game. They're worth victory points at the end of the game. Uh, if you have one of one symbol, it's worth one point. If you have two of that symbol, each one is worth two points. If you have three of that symbol, each one is worth three points, etc. So it sort of tessellates out in that way. But what, what's really ex interesting is that if you have sets of the three symbol, each set is worth seven additional points. So if I were to have this out there right now, this would be worth ten victory points at the end of the game. One point for each card, and then seven extra points because I have a set. So you can see that these can really add up points in a hurry. Um, we also have as a card option, military cards. They're the red ones. They have a little symbol at the top. For each of these symbols that you have in front of you, that you have more than your neighbor, um, you will earn victory point tokens. In the first round, you get one victory point. Second age, at the end of the second age, you'll get three victory points if you beat a neighbor. And in the last, the final stage, you get five victory points if you beat a neighbor. Um, the Another good part about it is your neighbor will get minus one victory point if you've beat them but it stays minus one throughout the entire game and it doesn't change uh... and then the last card here that i want to talk about at this point um, is not 
Uh, well, actually, there's that's all the basic cards, really. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about, let's put it that way, is talking about this age, or this, you know, wonder right here. Um, if you'll see at the top of the wonder, over here in the corner, right there, you'll see a, a resource. You produce that resource every turn from the beginning of the game. One of those resources. Um, you can use it to build things. Your neighbors can use it to build things. But only the ones on either side of you. But if they do that, they have to pay you two coins. They're buying whatever your resource is off of you in order to produce whatever it is they're doing. Um, when you're when you're doing the cards, you'll have, like I said, a hand of seven. You go through it, find which card you want to keep, put it face down in front of you. When everyone has chosen their card, everybody flips over at the same time. And now, in this case, I would produce not only the uh, stone, but now I also produce textiles as well. I can produce both one of each of these per turn. Um, now, another option you can choose when you have your seven cards in your hand, you can say, oh, uh, well, once, you, once you've taken your card, uh, you've shown your card, the rest of the cards that are in your hand actually get passed to the neighbor on your left in the first age, to the right on this in the second age, and then back to the left on the third age. So you're not going to have the same cards throughout the entire game. Um, they get passed around, you know, around the table. Um, but... Uh, you have two other options with your cards if you don't want to choose a card to, to keep. Uh, you can either discard a card and get three three coins for it, or if, you have, if you're producing the items down here on your stage, or your, your wonder rather, you can put a card face down like that under that section of your wonder to denote you've built that so you've earned whatever reward is listed. In my case, it would be three victory points. Now, that's the basic gameplay. A very basic gameplay. Let's go back to talk about the cards again a little bit. Um, there's a couple rules with the cards. If you'll notice, each card has a name on it. In this case, it's the Stone Pit. You cannot have two of the exact same card. So I could not build two Stone Pits. I can only have one Stone Pit. If I need more stone for some reason, I have to find another card that produces stone that does not is not called the, the Stone Pit. Um, you know, I can, there are other cards in here that produce it. You don't just have just the stone pit. There are, like, for example, we have Timber Yard makes both stone and tim and lumber. So, you have options. But the uh, Timber Yard is a great example of what I'm going to talk about next. Two different things. First, if you look here in the corner, it has a little coin symbol. That means in order to buy this card, in order to get this card out, I have to pay one coin. Any cost associated with a card is going to be in this corner. Secondly, if you see symbols like this that are separated by a slash, that means it does not produce both of those in one turn. Only one or the other for whoever is using the item. So if, in my case, if, if I had this card out here, um, along with the textiles that I had out here earlier, I would produce one stone, Plus either or plus a textile, and then plus either an additional stone or a lumber. Not both, if that makes sense. Um, another item that I want to mention right now is here we go. Find an example on the card. You'll notice that on on the in the other side down here in the bottom right hand corner, it will list another card name. Sometimes. If you already have this card out in front of you, and this card comes up in the hand you have, and you want to buy that card, you can buy that card for no extra cost. Even if there's a cost listed here in the corner, you can ignore that cost because the cards chain together. You can use them both. And you do that throughout the entire game, buying cards, you know, getting cards out there, getting up your getting your little strategy going until you get to the third age. Now, in the third age, there's a new card that gets introduced. And that card is a purple card. It's called a guild. The guilds work similar to some of the other cards, and they usually end up just getting you victory points. Sometimes it can get you other things. They're usually very expensive. As you can see here, this costs a lot. Two stone, two brick, and, and a glass. Um, 
but they can also usually give you pretty good benefits. Uh, once all three stages are com completed, you've gone through all three, then you go through the uh, the little pad here that they that comes with the game, um, and you add up the, the amount of points that have been gained from each type of card until you end up with a sheet that looks kind of like this. And then you, when you tally all those up, you can find the winner. Um, now, I know it sounds confusing. I know it sounds confusing. Every time I've ever you know, explained this game to anyone, the first time I've explained it to them, I definitely get the looks where people are thinking that, wait, hold on, you're expecting me to play this game? This is so complex, so com you know, confusing, I don't understand it. But I guarantee, I have yet to have a person where this guarantee failed me, but I absolutely, 100% guarantee that after the first age happens, once the first age goes through in this game, you're going to understand it. It's very complex in the explanation, but very simple in the gameplay. Now, when I say simple, I mean you'll understand how to play it. Now, the strategies in this game can get very involved um, because you have multiple elements you have to you have to consider. You have to consider, um, you know, how you want to get to the victory points. Do you want to focus on one thing? Do you want to spread out the love a little bit and try for a couple of different options? Or, you know, you know how do you want to how do you want to approach the game? There's a lot of different options in this game. Um, there's, you know, the option of, um, are, do you want to try to screw your neighbor? There's an option with that too because when you when you get that hand of cards and you're looking at it, uh, because you have the ability to put a card underneath your um, your wonder and not use it. Uh, you can kind of screw your neighbor in that way in, in terms of, hey, you know, if I'm sitting here playing and I know that I'm playing next to Bob, who is really gunning for military, that looks like that's going to be his primary way of gaining victory points. And I pull up, I pick up a hand and there's a ton of really good, or there's one really good military card in that hand. Um, and say there's nothing in that hand that I necessarily want for myself. Uh, maybe I just want to go ahead and discard that military card and keep him from getting it and get some gold for myself. Or maybe that'd be the perfect opportunity for me to build a stage of my wonder and uh, keep him from getting that card. Now, there's a lot of different strategic elements in this game, a lot of different things to think about. There is an expansion for this game called Leaders. I do not have that expansion, have not played that expansion, don't really know a whole lot about the expansion, so I can't really give you too much on that one. Um, but uh, I believe there's also another expansion that's on its way out. I might be wrong in that, but I think so. So um, just think about that, look around, check it out. Um, again, it's Seven Wonders by Antoine Bauza, produced by Repose Productions. Uh, this game plays in about a half hour. If you don't take too much time to really think about your decisions, um, one of the great things about this game is that you don't have to t do a lot of thinking. I mean, once you've figured out how you're going to approach your g the game, what kind of strategy you're going to have, it goes pretty quickly. Um, you know, it takes two, three minutes for you to look at your hand of cards, go, okay, this is the one I want, put it in front of you, wait for everyone else, turn it over, pick up the next step, hand of cards, go through it. So you do that over the course of three ages, and uh, it's pretty quick. Uh, I have played this game with people who have a uh, form of analysis paralysis, where they want to think through every single move they make and try to think seven, eight turns ahead. This is not a game you want to do that with, because you're the game changes every single time you pick a card because the person that's behind you, you know, that you just handed the cards to, uh, they might pull out a card that you weren't expecting them to pull out and start moving on a different strategy. Um, their strategy might be different than what you expected it to be. So you kind of have to change with it and, and just be more fluid. You can't really try to think through the entire game. If you do that, you're really going to bog it down and you're not going to have a good time. Uh, 
Um, so definitely check it out. Seven Wonders. It's, it's the hotness on Board Game Geek, and it's the hotness for a reason. Plays two to seven players in about 30 minutes. Uh, I've never really seen the gameplay bogged down with more players like it uh, does sometimes do with other games. So check it out. About $50. Seven Wonders.